27-year-old Cynthia Rogers lived in Prince George's County in 1989. She was a biologist and was working on research on Parkinson's disease at the National Institutes of Health. On January 22, 1989, Cynthia left her house to go to the market and purchase items for Sue. Later, when Cynthia's family members tried to contact her and failed to reach her, they called the police to report her missing. Five days after she was last seen, Cynthia's body was found on a dirt path littered with trash in the Forestville, Maryland area. Police knew that locals frequently used the path as a shortcut to the store. Cynthia had multiple blunt force injuries to her upper body and head. She had been strangled. After the autopsy was done, it was determined that she had been assaulted as well. The DNA belonging to the man who committed this crime was taken from her body and stored so it could be used later when DNA was more advanced. In 2018, Detective Bernie Nelson started working on the case. The DNA collected from the crime scene was then used to rule out several suspects. At the time, however, it wasn't a strong enough sample to run through the federal database. The profile that the FBI was able to develop from the sample wasn't strong enough to meet the standards to enter into the database, said Nelson. But it is something we can work with if given the name of someone who we can approach and obtain their DNA and compare it directly to the sample. More recently, with DNA technology that's even more advanced, investigators could enter the DNA sample from the suspect into the FBI database. It matched to James Clinton Cole. Cole had several charges filed against him. This includes a misdemeanor assault in 1984 and a charge of destruction of property just days before Cynthia's disappearance. When interviewed, Cole denied ever knowing or meeting Cynthia 33 years ago. It has not yet been indicated when Cole is scheduled to appear before a judge in the case. He is currently incarcerated at the Western Correctional Institution in Cumberland, Maryland for an unrelated crime. Cole is 64 years old and would have been 32 at the time of the crime was committed. It's not believed that he and Cynthia knew each other. Cynthia's brother, Philip Rogers, had this to say. The burden has been lifted to a certain point. There will never be total healing because of the incident altogether but we have some relief. Cynthia's mother, Rosia Rogers, said, This makes us feel better. My heart is feeling lighter. Eighteen-year-old Anita Knudsen lived in Minot, North Dakota in 2007. She was described as a tenacious, kind, and compassionate young woman. She had just completed her first year at Minot State University, where she was studying elementary education. She was working two jobs to pay for school and was living in an off-campus apartment with her roommate, Nicole Rice. Anita's mother, Sharon Knutson, last spoke to Anita on Friday, June 1, 2007. The two were in touch daily. When Anita didn't answer her phone for several days, Sharon asked her husband, Gordon, to drive from their home in Butte, North Dakota, to Anita's apartment. Gordon attempted to enter the apartment, but it was locked. He then found the landlady and the maintenance worker and asked for help. The maintenance man had recalled seeing a window screen, removed and sliced out of Anita's apartment. Gordon went to look for the screen and realized it was from Anita's bedroom window. He looked inside and saw his daughter on her bed. He touched her through the window to wake her up, but when he felt how cold her skin was, he knew she was not alive anymore. Gordon then called 911 to report what he had just seen. Officers arrived at 5.12 p.m. They removed a large house coat that was on top of her body. It was clear to them that she had been stabbed numerous times. Investigators found a small pocket knife with dried blood on the edge of Anita's bed. Her laptop, cell phone, purse, and digital camera were all in her bedroom. This indicated that robbery was not the motive for the crime. There were no signs that anyone had entered through Anita's bedroom window, where the screen had been taken out. Investigators also determined that the screen was cut after the crime was committed. Sergeant David Goodman from the Minot Police Department said, I believe the purpose would be to mislead law enforcement, to try and show that this is possibly an entry point. Police questioned Anita's friends, neighbors, and construction workers who were on a job nearby. They also found traces of DNA on the pocket knife and took samples from the people they interviewed. Police then spoke to Anita's roommate, Nicole Rice. Rice said that she was with her family all weekend. Investigators suspected that something was off with Rice's story. Statements given by Rice and her parents were allegedly inconsistent and contradictory. 
several of Anita's friends told police that Anita and Rice often fought. They described Rice as hot-tempered and reactionary. Anita's mother, Sharon, agreed and said Anita was scared of her. She added that Rice allegedly sent Anita threatening messages. Anita planned to move out. Minot Police Chief John Klung said that Rice is a suspect. He received tips about Rice and they were following all leads, but they did not have enough evidence to arrest her. Thus, the case went cold for many years. This year, in 2022, the Minot Police Department began re-interviewing suspects and witnesses. They also partnered with a true crime show called Cold Justice. The program provides additional support and expertise for investigators to help solve the case. During the renewed effort, investigators learned that Rice was dating a man for a few months in 2008 and 2009. According to the man, Rice got belligerently drunk one evening. Rice then told the man that she took Anita's life. The man later tried to ask Rice about the confession when she was sober, but she allegedly rebuffed the questions in anger. On the 16th of March, 2022, Rice was arrested at the Minot Air Force Base, where she worked as a civilian. She was taken to Ward County Jail and released the next day on a $120,000 bond. Rice is due back in court on April 21st, according to court records. Minot Police Chief John Klung did not want to provide more details in the evidence that pointed to Rice. I think the turning point in this case was just really trying to pull all that information together and put it in an order that made sense. It just took a little bit of refocusing and a lot of paying attention to the finer details. My heart goes out to the family. I wish we could have solved this sooner, but at the same time, I'm glad to say that we have the person responsible in custody.